Hello everybody! I want to further improve my Swift code and in this tutorial I want to talk about file structure, how you organize your files and which, with what kind of schema in mind and another way of improving your readability is to use markers. I'm going to continue working on a existing project which I created for networking, how to work with network requests. And this is the cat project or cat breed project where I fetch a list of breeds and I can see the details of each of these breeds. Some of the stuff I'm going to talk about might look a little bit picky, but especially if you work in a team, this can be very interesting just to have some consistency in the project to know where you have to look for certain things. Let's start by looking at the way I structure my Swift UI views. Oh file structure. Usually the main view comes first and then we have this previews. So for me I usually use one mark. This has to be capital letters. If you use a dash you also get a line with previews. And what you get is in the minimap, if you don't see this, this is here in the editor under minimap. And now if you hover over this you also can see this nicely and it's also allowing you to actually jump this is very convenient. And now you see I have this nice line to know that this block is for the previews. If I now look at my content view, I have basically two properties. One is my state object and one is the body. I use more empty lines in between just to distinguish between them. Just going to move these ones. If the file gets longer, it's also a good idea to keep consistent with these markers. And then maybe have a marker for body and some empty lines in between. Right now this view doesn't have a lot else in there. So let's go to the next one in the breed list view. So again I'm just going to add here the marker for the preview. You can also use file templates um, to add them automatically now. And then again the marker for body and the mark for properties. Now if you look at, in this case I have three different properties. I have a let constant, a state property and a computed property. You can also, especially, I mean this is a very simple example, if you have multiple of them, you might also want to have some kind of organization. Maybe you start with the in accessing the environment objects, then state properties, computed properties and constants. That's another way of keeping the same organization. But in order to, I don't use extra markers because then it gets a little bit overkill. You can also create here an initializer. I think I have one here. Yes, in the breed detail view. From my con my um, structure is the properties are first, then the initializer and then the body. Need to decide. And then in some cases you also have functions. I don't have this. <laughs> you can also have public or private functions or methods. Usually the private would be after the public ones. Although in this case it's a view so probably don't have the public ones. And then I still have here the preview and I have this one subview. You can also have a marker for subviews and the previews. You can also have the preview after the subviews. It's just um, pick one structure and then stick with it, be consistent. That's very important. Now, additionally, let's have a look at one of the view models. So you see I have here properties and methods. Okay, in this case I actually have public methods and then I need to, and you see I have here my minimap and I can just easier check, oh, I need to go to my, I see the name property and I can jump to properties. In this case, I sorted this as, uh, again, the more public properties are going higher in my file. The advantage of having these properties up here and not somewhere in the middle is if, for example, I move this down here and then I go to the other file, I do something and I come back and I'm like, okay, I need something with me. Where is the, where's the property with, I need a property, something. Ah, no, there's another one down here. So it, otherwise I need to scroll through this file. It's just one way of sorting and keeping things organized. Another way of, and because now I have these blocks of 
code. Another thing that you need to, um, that you sometimes have, I don't have this, is nested types. So maybe I have here an enum state. I would declare this as a, at the very top. So I, maybe I did choose to have here loading or error cases instead of these properties. And then I would choose to have here another mark for types. This is another thing that you might want to add to your code. Just going to take this out because I'm not using it here. I'm just going to move this into my test class. So this is the class that we gen that I generated earlier. So in between, I always want to format the this file in order to make this even looking better. I'm using um, the Control I to format this and have the right indentation. In some cases, you have a lot of indentation. Intendation. And then it's a good idea to create here this kind of subviews that I had. Another thing is that helps is the not creating too long functions or properties. The body is a computed property. It is computed like a function. And yeah, try if you create something, don't make it longer than what fits on the screen um, because you need to, otherwise you will need to scroll a lot and you cannot grasp all the information at once. Now that I extracted this into a sub, some part into a subview, I have two chunks that are separate from each other from the logic part. So it makes it easier for me to uh, read one by one. It's the same for view model with the classes. Make multiple smaller things. And it also helps because now I have the, uh, the other advantage of having smaller chunks is that um, for this one subview, or function, some one subview extracted function. It is more descriptive because I gave it a name. So next time I'm here, I know what this part is doing. It's an optional image view that uses an optional URL to create, uh, to fetch the image automatically with a loading state and also an error state. So make them multiple parts in your file. One example for this was here in my content view, where I had just three different states. In case of a, a loading, I show a loading view instead in case I have an error, I show the error view and if everything's fine, I show the breed list view. The project is rather at this current state small. So it would be possible to write everything in this one file, but obviously I would have a couple of hundred lines that's manageable. It's not so nice, but it's manageable. But of course, if you're going bigger then uh, putting them in more files and more chunks is much better just to organize this kind of file structure. As I said, there's no specific rules about how to do this, but you need to have some kind of structure <laughs> because obviously it's not just the structure in your file, it's the project files, the whole project that needs to have some structure. You have to decide how you want to do it. And the most important is be consistent, stick with it. This also is true for naming conventions, for how you name your folders. For example, if you prefer to have named this here with capital letters and you start, you would change this to view with a capital letter or I have all of my folders start with a small letter. All the folders here need to be belonging there. It needs to be logic that all of these files have to do something with networking. Consistency in your structure really helps with the readability to find things to understand how things work together. Just try to take advantage of these markers and the minimap for your own projects. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Until next time, happy coding.